Good morning, my name is Carol Rosen. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February. And we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. There is a, there is a lie, lie being, being told, told to, told everyone. to everyone. Presented by Apollo 18, in theaters everywhere September 2nd. We challenge the top minds in biology, military strategies, and astrophysics to predict what would actually take place during an extraterrestrial invasion. The scenario they came up with is both cataclysmic and possible. People still hold the view that an alien invasion would be traditional invasion, shooting down fighter jets and buildings with the ray guns. But um, it, it's probably much more sophisticated than that. Uh, first of all, it would be a global attack. When you invade a planet, you're not gonna be invading the US or Russia or Japan because to aliens, we seem like ants. We're all alike. What is much more practical is to launch a global invasion. Remember, 
the aliens probably don't want to take out the entire planet and everything living on it. And after all, they came all the way across the galaxy to our planet, probably because of the biosphere that we have on the planet. They have to take care of us without harming the biosphere in the process. The way they can do that is to focus on the one thing that we are dependent on that the rest of the biosphere is not, and that's technology. Michelle Rodriguez hosts Alien Invasion, Are We Ready? On the next Curiosity, this Sunday at 8, only on Discovery. I mean, if if we if we discovered that uh, you know space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive buildup to counter the the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that um, this slump would be over in 18 months and singly the Vatican. Just finishing up this The Vatican now, a five-day conference on aliens. Father Jonathan Morris, Fox News contributor, back with us. Father, good morning to you. Uh, did the Vatican find alien life? You know what? It's sensationalistic as that question sounds. It's really not that far off from what we've seen in the news over these last days. The pictures of what might have been Pope Benedict standing on the, the roof of the Sistine Chapel looking for UFOs. That's, a, that's the type of images that this news conjures up. What is exceptional, what is exceptional is that the Vatican was taking very seriously what science might tell us about the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligent life forms. That's what the conference was about. I can't tell you that the Vatican found any alien life. I don't think that's what they were looking for, but they well, were we taking have, very seriously well, the you issue. Know the, you know the history just like we do. I mean, they've come a long way since Galileo four, five hundred years ago. Well, what do you think it says about the church and it's, it, it's actually looking at this issue? Well, a great question, Bill. Uh, what it says is that although there have been some inglorious moments uh, of, of relationship of faith and science, the Vatican and not just Catholics, Christians in general, they brought 30 of the best scientists, the astrobiologists, of the cosmologists, of the astronomists, to tell the philosophers and the theologians what they already know about the possibility of something that could happen. Now, what they're trying to do is get out of the story, get out ahead and say, what if we were to find life outside of this planet? What does that tell us about the, the doctrine of original sin, of Adam and Eve, and their point here is that we have to allow science to lead us in what is their field without going into it with ideology saying no, I, I we know that God doesn't I exist. I think or that's something. a great point. Now you as a Roman Catholic priest, you're open to science is what you're saying, correct? Without a doubt, not only I, open, I, not only open, Bill, but we have to respect science in its own field. Attacked your planet. All your soldiers and all their advanced technology could only put up a measly nine minute fight. Which is why man is an endangered species. A crisis of leadership. We've been talking about this all week. But what if there was some sort of outer space crisis? An alien invasion sounds crazy, perhaps. But then who thought we'd ever see the stock market swing 5% a day all week long? So maybe it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. If aliens invaded, who would step up to lead us in that fight and could we even win?
Scientists tell us we have to be careful and from an ethical point of view we must develop our conscience as well. From your extraordinary observation point, how do you see situation on Earth? Do you see signs or phenomena to which we need to be more attentive? On the one hand, we could see how indescribably beautiful the planet that we have been given is, but on the other hand, we can really clearly see how fragile it is. Now, just the atmosphere, for instance, the atmosphere when viewed from space is paper thin. And to think that this paper thin layer is all that separates every living thing uh, from the vacuum of space and all that protects us is really a sobering thought. In the midst of your intense work and research, do you ever stop and reflect like this? Perhaps even to say a prayer to the creature? Or will it be easier for you to think about these things once you have returned to Earth? I do pray for, for me, for our families, for our future. I took with me the coin and uh, I allowed this coin to float in front of me to demonstrate microgravity. I shall thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, I would like to allow this coin to float to my friend and colleague Paolo. He will make return on Earth on the Soyuz. I brought it with me to space and uh, it will take down on Earth to then give back to you. I will continue to follow you in my thoughts and prayers and I will impart my apostolic blessing. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world.
And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? You have to let it all go. Fear, fear, doubt, doubt, disbelief. disbelief.